well today we are doing a shootout about restoration and maybe before we start that welcome home this we are doing a video in our country today As you can see the environment is cool and sweet so I'm Tharaitich Patrick Egon taking you through a message on restoration before we do that I want us to have a read of the, this book that is up it's for a better you it talks about successful people understand the past the present and the future and because today our message comes from the past I want us to talk about successful people do not allow their past to kill their future success they do not accept the bad circumstances surrounding their past to lame their future dreams whether earlier poverty past failure or past mistakes, they will work to overcome them and forge ahead. Learn to forgive your past by forgiving others and yourself. Seek for forgiveness when you have done something wrong unto them. When you do not have anything bitter holding you back, you will be at peace to work for anything you want. Personal growth relies much on you, how willing you will be ready to forgive. Breaking away from the past empowers you to forge ahead and appreciate the present. Forgiveness is never a sign of weakness, but a mark of strength. A mark of strength and ability to handle the pain and let go of what happened before. It is about understanding that sometimes we make mistakes. You cannot progress when things are facing you from all points of life. Take time to forgive and forget and forge ahead with peace. When you have wronged someone, seek for forgiveness and sincerity and let not be successful in the process. The reason we are talking about this is most of us, if not, if not all of us, in one way or the other have messed up in their lives. And sometimes we are so much messed up that we ask, is this really the kind of life we wanted? Do God even really remember us for real? Will we ever come out of this problem again? So today we are here to talk about that, what we need to do, why we need to restore ourselves, and what is the meaning of restoration. For you to understand that, there are three time spans. So we, are talk we have talked about the past, let us read about living in the present. Enjoy the present moment, get time to enjoy that meal, to have fun and be happy. Take full charge of whatever is happening and maximize your moments as much as possible. Take charge of what is happening today. Be present to feel the happiness of succeeding in, some time, in something and be there to feel the heat of failure and disappointment. Appreciate the now and present moments even while seeking for a better future. And finally, let's talk about the future where we will discuss after the restoration what will be happening. So the, this book is, is always aimed for the best for the future and be prepared for the best out of it. However, do not allow it to eat into the present. Remember, the best way to predict your future is to be able to ensure whatever is done today contributes positively towards a better tomorrow. Be keen on what you are doing for it determines what The best way to hand my book have it for a better you because this book was written so that it can inspire you to ensure that whatever you are going through today you can have a stand, you can stop and say this is what I want to change and work towards situation and you have to believe that tomorrow is better than today so our verses of inspiration comes from two verses 
Number one, we are going to talk about Job 42.10, which says, After Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his uh, the Lord the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Jeremiah 29.11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, the plans for to prosper you and not to harm you. The plans to give you hope and a future. So let us go back and ask ourselves, what are the kind of problems you are going through? What is this thing you are in now? Are you in a failed marriage? Are you a victim of drug addiction? Have you gone back to poverty? up your life like the woman of Samaria? Have you messed up your relationships? Have you messed up your schoolwork? Do you think there is no hope? If you believe that whatever you are today, you have lost this money, you have lost everything and you are in the act of disparation because this is the reality in life. This is the reality we are seeing. In fact, two days or three days ago, just in a pool, one of the, the gentlemen decided to go and uh, commit suicide. Went up top the, the main tower, the main electricity supply tower. And off he went like that. This is the results of disparation, which is affecting us. And given the realities even on the ground for now, this big 2022, we are just out from the effect of Corona. 2020, 2021, most of us are just are just at the point of at the last point of committing suicide, at the last point of losing everything, at the last point of giving up on relationships. But today I want to tell you that there is a reason why you need to stop. There is a reason why you need to trust that you can be able to restore yourself and be greater than even what you are doing the other time. Let me ask you this question. Let's go and study. Who knew that even Joseph, after being rejected by his family, would have to and given such a position in the society? Who knew that Joseph, even after being friends with the family, and being rejected by his family, and he was sentenced to jail? Who knew that this will be the guy who will be? Be able to interpret dreams and become the person who will be looked upon even so much even to make it even greater is that the very people who sold him who enslaved him to slavery were the same people who benefited from the restoration of Joseph. Are you that Samaria woman? Have you been termed as an outcast? Have the community rejected you? And Jesus meets with this particular woman from Samaria. She has been married to various men. And even at the present moment when they were meeting Jesus, he was, she was living at uh, the house of a man who was not her husband. But look what Jesus did. He accepted her the way she is. Talked to her out of compassion and gave her the second chance in life. And that is how she was recovered. Are you like Jacob? Temptation here, temptation there. You are waking up today, you are having your sheep, your goods, your property are down. Are you a victim of being auctioned? Are you messed up? Your property is going each day. And you are asking yourself, when will this one really come to the end? Are you this particular person? What to be Job 42 then? Which says that our job was restored even greater than what he had initially. That is, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. If you thought you had lost everything, God says that he can restore this particular thing even twice 
than what you had. Let us look at this further inspiration. Look at the Israelites. After living in its, uh, its slavery, God came and gave them the second chance. He freed them up and he told them to go and make better use of themselves as free men. Do you think you have been captured? Do you think you are a slave to a particular bad addiction? Do you think you are a slave of bad habits? You are a slave of betting? You are a slave of, um, let's say, drug addiction? You are a slave of bad habits? Do you think you have been enslaved? Because people like enslaving others. Do you see your life has been messed up? You cannot free yourself from whatever conditions you have. Today, I want to tell you that, just like the Israelites, one day, and I hope it is today, you will open your eyes and God will give you the gift so that you are free like the Israelites to go and work on your life and have the second chance because that is the best thing you know. So I want us to look at two things further. Number one, what exactly are the steps you need for you to be able to come up and restore your life? Number one, which is very fundamental, is what is called acceptance. You must accept the reality on ground that you are messed up in life. It's better for you to stand up and count your cows using the tails rather than count them using the ons. The assumption that all of them have the ons. If you count them using the ons, for every cow you will count that you have two cows. And yet, if you are to count them using the tails, for every cow you have a real one cow. So if you count them using the ons, it means you'll be lying to yourself. So stop lying to yourself. If you are messing yourself when it comes to financial discipline, you need to stop. Today, not tomorrow. Because tomorrow never comes. Sit down. Look at what exactly happened. When did the rain start beating you? If you are a victim of drug addiction, stop today. Look. What really happened? When did you start this addiction? What needs to be done right now? If you are a victim of self-conquering behavior, if you have negative self-esteem about yourself, if you are always there beating about whatever is happening in your life, I want you to accept that you are in a problem. Because when you accept, that is when you will start to face reality and look for changes, look for solutions and not make excuses. You need to stop blaming people. That is not something to argue about. Stop blame game. Stop saying that is my parents. Stop saying it is my friends. Stop saying, oh, this is I'm a victim of circumstances. Stop saying our country is poor. Stop saying blah, 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 blah. You know I'm not educated and all that. No. Take responsibility and accept that there is a problem in life and this is where we are and I really want to make a change. Number two, seek for forgiveness and this is twofold. Number one, you must forgive yourself. Let's start from that. I know someone will ask, how should I forgive myself yet somebody else is the one who hurt me? There are some reasons and there are some places I know in one way or the other you must have played this, uh, the, the, the journey which messed you up in this cycle. So you must stop and forgive yourself so that you find by forgiving internally you can be able to forgive other people. Because if you go back to the book where we have told about that is the commandments of love. It says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That means you can only give what you have. It means you can only love your neighbor if you love yourself. So it means you can only offer forgiveness if you can be able to forgive yourself. So you must be able to forgive number one yourself. Number 
to the tormentors. I know it might be hard. Some people say I'll forgive, but I'll not forget. But look at this. You're holding on to a burning water. And you expect that the other friend is the one who will be hurt. You'll be lying to yourself. It is you who will be hurting. It is you who will be paining, even if somebody else tormented you. So you need to forgive. You need to forget so that you can come up and start afresh. That's the second step you need to do. Number three, we talk about willpower. Willpower, I'll talk about willpower vis-a-vis -vis the grace of God. Okay, in as much as you, you may want to make this happen, you must have the ability and the willingness to sit down and go through the process. If you are a drug addict, for example, it means you have to sit down, talk out to people, accept that you are messed up, get into the mentorship stage and work on counting every day, every single day you have gone without that particular drug day. And for you to count 30 days, for you to count two days, this what is called will power. Run away from temptation. Jesus said that. Do not go and tempt. I like telling people that this is my quote. Do not trouble trouble until trouble troubles you. So do not go and say, I'm strong enough. You know, uh, I've just come out, I know. I can just sit down and see people drinking. My friend, you'll end up testing it. So don't go back to what was messing you up. Stop. Get the willpower. Take charge of your process. And definitely it will come home. Talk about grace. Pray and pray and pray. So that God's grace can be upon you. Because, as we say, success is when opportunity meets preparedness. So for me, I say success in restoration is when your willpower meets the grace of God. That is when everything will change. The year of starting afresh. The last thing I wanted to do on that is what is called the new beginning. Accept the new beginning. Accept the new you and build yourself up. One day I was told of a story that there were two dogs which were fighting in the head or in the mind of this particular gentleman. And they went and asked their father that inside our hearts and head we have dogs which are fighting. Which one will win? So there was a good dog and a bad dog. And this old man told them, the one which you feed most is the one which will win. And that is the reality of life. You'll be having two things fighting in your head. Number one, the new beginning. And number two, the old self, which wants to reincarnate and take it back to where you are coming from. So depending on what you'll feed along the line, either the new beginning or the old self will win. So for me, I want you to take charge and feel the new beginning. Empower the new you. If you have to go for mentorship, if you have to get a new friends, if you have to do a lot of things, ensure you are doing to ensure the new beginning. And finally, my message today goes to people who are around us, who are going through the restoration phase in life. What should we do to empower these people? What should we do so that we can make the restoration process for our friends, for our neighbors, for our families to happen more fast? I want you to do the following. Number one, I'll start with a quote. Not really a quote, but a good phrase. They say that if you are not willing to help someone, at least don't be the agent which is destroying this particular thing. So if you are not ready to see this person restoring, it's even better you don't talk. It's even better you just keep off and allow them to grow. 
So number one, I want you to give space. Give space for growth. Don't be there demeaning people. Don't be there talking about people. Don't bring your jealousy there. Give these people space so that they can be able to restore themselves and make a better beginning. Remember, in their weakest point, I know your friends, your people who are in a mess will want to share their life. Maybe they are going through a hard life and they wanted you to give them help. And instead of helping them, you are there now spreading the rumors. So I want you to stop that and give these people space so that they can be able to grow. Number two, be the stepping stone. If you see that somebody is coming out, help them come out. Give them the whatever you can do. If you are not talking about financial support, give them the inspiration they need. Give them the mental attitude they need. Give them the training they need. Give them the support network when it comes to being together so that they can be helped and they can be restored. Because one person restored is a gift to every one of us. Because those mean we have not lost a talent somewhere. Because honestly speaking, most talents today, as we speak, are lying at the grave. Renew their hope. Be the ambassador of hope. Empower them so that things will work better. Do not remind them of their past. Be their future. Because as we said, no matter what, the future will be better than today and tomorrow. If you don't agree with it, then I want to ask you this challenge. If the future is not better than what we are doing today, then tell me who will have done a great job in making the song Amazing Grace which was done by John Newton, who was the biggest person who first made people slaves. If he had not restored, then today we will not be having amazing grace. Thank you so much for listening to me. This is Thoratich Patrick Egon. Kindly subscribe and support us. Thank you so much.